In today's video, I will show you how to implement the stunning e-commerce app UI within Flutter. We're going to be building a home page, which will show us a list of all of the sneakers available for a user to purchase, as well as the product detail page that is going to show us additional information about the product. So these are the two screens that we're going to be working on. So let's get into it. To get started, the first thing that we're going to be doing is importing all of the packages that our app is going to depend on. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I kept them to a bare minimum. We're only going to be using the Google Fonts package, which is going to allow us to implement some custom fonts within our app, as well as the water drop nav bar package, which is going to allow us to implement the bottom nav bar that we're seeing on our home page. So to implement these packages, all I'm going to do is copy these package names, come back to my project, come to the pubspec.yaml file, and then under dependencies, I am going to be pasting in Google Fonts, and then after that, the water drop nav bar like so. As a side note, links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video, as well as a link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. The next thing that we're going to be doing is just importing some files that are going to contain the data that we are going to then use to actually display information on our home page and our product page. So to do that, what you can do is basically use the link down in the description below to download for free the source code for this application and then just copy and paste the files within the lib folder that I'm going to show you now. So basically all you need to do is come within the lib folder of your application or your project, I should say, and make sure that you copy in from the actual source code that you've downloaded the models folder like so. And this is going to contain the different model files for the brand and the product. And besides this, there's going to be a data.dart file that you can come and paste that within your lib folder as well. So the data.dart file is just going to contain a list of data for the brands that we support that we're showing here on our homepage, as well as the actual products that we support that we're showing on our homepage. So with this done, that's pretty much all you had to do. The whole composition of the UI we're going to be doing from scratch so that you can get a good grasp of how to build this kind of a UI using Flutter. So to get started, what I'm going to do is give my application a test run, make sure that it's running on the simulator before we proceed any further, and then I will resume the video. Welcome back everybody. So as you can see, the application is now running on the simulator so we can begin the building process for the UI. I've already created a home underscore page dot dart file under my pages folder, which for now is just a class that is a stateless widget class and returns an empty scaffold. Before we add anything to our home page, I will come to my main dot dart file and basically update the theme data object here so that we can add some new properties to it. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is instead of using the color scheme property that's being shown here, I'm going to say that we're going to have a color scheme seed and this is going to be a color and the color that I'm going to be using, I'll just copy and paste that in, but it's going to be 255, 251 and 48 as its RGB value and 82 for the actual opacity. So once that is done, I'll also define the scaffold background color. So basically what the color for the scaffolds are going to be that we're going to be using throughout our application. And I'm going to do scaffold background color. And this is going to be a somewhat, I should say light gray kind of color. So the actual hex value for this or RGB value for this is going to be 249, 249, 249, and then 1.04 opacity. So this kind of a gray color. And then the actual main color for our application is this pinkish hueish color that you're seeing. So now that this is done, what I'm going to do is also make sure that all of the app bars that I use within my application, they have no background color, so they're basically transparent. So to do that, I'm going to set the app bar theme property to be a new instance of app bar theme object. And here I'm going to do that the color will be colors.transparent. So now wherever we are going to be using our app bar, we are going to have no background color for it. And once this is done, the last thing that I'm going to be doing is basically defining the text theme that I am going to be using within my application. So what's the default text font, we should say, that the different texts that we display within our application are going to use. Since we are using the Google Fonts package, you can use any of the available listed fonts that are on Google Fonts. So if you go to Google Fonts, which I'll leave a link to this website down in the description below, any font that you see here, you can use that within your application using the package that we've just used. So I'm going to be using the following one, which is called Lexend here, as you can see, and it's going to be used as follows. So just remember the name of the actual font, and then we can minimize the browser window, come back to where we are defining our theme data. And on my theme data, I am going to have a property for text theme. And I'm gonna set the text theme property to be Google Fonts, like so, and then dot Lexend theme, like so, and there we have it, Lexent text theme. 
And that's pretty much all we had to do. So now with this done, I'll do command save, make sure that nothing's broken and then reload my application as well. The last thing I'll do is that I'll remove this debug banner that we're seeing at the top right corner. So for that, I'll come to the material app and say that we're going to set the debug show checked mode banner to false. And now the banner is gone. So with this done, we can come back to our home page. But just as a side note, I'd quickly like to let you know that I've set the home property on our material app to be a new instance of our home page object, which is this stateless widget that you're seeing here. So for our home page, we are basically going to be dividing the UI up into a couple of sections. We're going to have this top bar, as you can see, then we're going to have some text. We'll have a search bar. Following that, we're going to have a horizontal list view showing us some custom buttons. And then following that, we are going to have the actual grid view that shows us the different sneakers that are available in our app to purchase. So how are we going to be doing this? So let's take a top down approach. Let's go from top down. Let's make sure that the top looks good and then we can go to the bottom. So to do this, what I'll do is within my home page, I have the scaffold. I'll say that the body for the scaffold is going to be a call to a function called build UI. And I always like to make sure that my code's maintainable. So that's why I divide things up into functions so that it's easier for people to understand and easier for me to understand and compose my UI together. Then here, what I'm going to be doing for the build UI is firstly making sure that I return a safe area widget. And within the safe area widget, what I am then going to be doing is basically saying that I'm going to add some padding. So the child is going to be a padding widget. And the padding is going to be for now, let's just do edge insets dot symmetric. And then I'm going to do that we're going to have the same amount of padding on the horizontal axis from left and right. So let's specify that. And then I am basically going to say that it's going to be dependent upon the size of the screen. So what I want to do is basically access the devices width. we can do that by doing media query dot size of context dot width. And then I am going to multiply that with 0.02 like so. And now that this is done, I'll just add the trailing commas, make sure that everything looks good. And then I'm also going to add the trailing semicolon here. Then for the build UI function, I'll say that we are going to get a build context passed to this function. And here where I'm calling the build UI function, I'll pass in the context there as well. So now that we've added padding on the horizontal axis, before we add any more padding, what we can do is actually define the child for this padding widget. So the child for this is going to be a column and a column is a widget that we use to basically align children in a vertical manner. And the reason we're using a column again is for the fact that we have these different widgets and all of them are aligned in a vertical manner one after another. And for this, we use a column. So we are now going to implement a column. So a column widget has a list of children and then we can define what these children are. So firstly, we're going to have this top bar, which is going to have the actual image for our user. So to do that, what I will do is basically first create a function that will return our top bar. Its return is going to be a widget. Within this, I'm going to say that my top bar is going to have a fixed size. So firstly, I'll return a sized box. I'll give it a height. What is the height going to be? It actually depends on the screen size of the device since I want to make sure that my application looks good on all different device sizes. So I'll do media query that size of once again context. And then this time I'll access the height and I'll say that it needs to be 0.06 or so 6% of the total height of the device. Now that this is done, the next thing that I'm going to do is make sure that the build context gets passed to this function as well. And then with this then we can move on to the next step, which is to define the child. So I'll set the child for the size box to actually be a row widget. And this way I'll be able to actually align the image that you see here to the very right. So that's why we're using a row widget. So I'll say that the child here is going to be a row widget like so and it's going to have children and there's only going to be one child and this is going to be a circular avatar and I believe it's called the circle avatar. There we go. The child is going to be a circle avatar. Then I'm going to say it's going to have a background image, which is going to be an image that we get from network. So for that, we're going to use the network image. So once I have the network image defined, I have to basically give it a URL. So I'll basically copy and paste this URL in like so. And then again, this URL will be present in the actual source code, but you can use any type of URL that is of a picture and it should work. So now that this is done, we can take our top bar we can come to our build UI function to the column. And I can say that the false child within this column is going to be our top bar. 
like so and that's pretty much all we have to do so now if we do command save there we go we can actually see the circle avatar appearing i want to push this to the far right so for that i'll come to the actual row i'll access the main axis alignment so the main axis alignment refers to the main axis the main axis for the row is going to be the horizontal axis because that's how the children in a row are going to be aligned relative to each other and then for a column the main axis alignment is going to be the vertical axis so the main axis depends upon what type of widget we're using so the main axis alignment here is going to be main axis alignment dot end and then do save and there we go now it's pushed to the very right so now that this is done, I will come back to where I have my build UI function to where I'm adding the padding. And I'm going to say that I'd like to add some vertical padding as well. I'd like to say that it's going to be media query dot size of context dot height. And then we can do 0.01 .01, save. And as you can see that the actual top bar was now pushed a little bit further due to the padding that we added to the parent column under which it exists. So now we can move to the next part, which is to actually implement the title bar. And these are just names for functions that I've come up with myself. So the title bar is just going to be this discover text and then the text below that. So to do that, we are going to do the following. I am going to create a new function that returns a widget. It's going to be called the title. And then we are going to be returning a specific widget within this. And it's not going to be a text widget. It's going to be a implementation of the text widget, but a different constructor called text.rich. And the reason we're using text.rich is because it's going to allow us to pass in text span. And using text spans, we are going to be able to define different texts with different styling. So that's why I'm using a text span. And the text span is only going to be available to you to use if you use the dot rich constructor on the text widget. So the text span here is going to be the following text span widget. It's going to have children, and the children are also going to be text span. But these text spans are not going to have the children property set on them. They're going to have the text property set on them. And then I'm going to say that the first test is going to be discover like so. And there we go. We've done that. And then after this, what I'll do is add the trailing commas, take the function, come to my column after the top bar, add the call to the title function. There we go. We can now see discover. Next thing that I'd like to do is push the actual text to the left side. So what I'll do is that I'll come to the build UI function to the column that has all of our children within it. And I'm going to adjust the main axis size on the column first. So the main axis size is going to be main axis size max. I will do the main axis alignment as main axis alignment dot. And then we can do start. So align everything to the left like so. And then I'm going to do the cross axis alignment, which is also going to be start. Like so. So the cross axis alignment determines how the children are aligned on the horizontal axis. So star means the left. And then the actual main axis alignment, since it's a column, refers to the vertical axis. So the star means from the top. So there we have it. Now the discover text is looking great. So we got to update the styling for this. To do that, what I'll do is come to the text pen. And it's going to be the same as you do when you're just styling a normal text widget. So I'll add the style like so and do command save. So we just set the color to black, font weight to bold, and font size to 25. And since we're using Google Fonts package, you can see that the font looks amazing and we can move on to the next part. So the next part is going to be the same. Just copy this text span, paste it in once more. As you can see that the new text is added right alongside the existing text. So I'll add a new line here by doing slash n, forward slash n, and this basically means new line, so break, and there we go. Now it's on a new line. And the text here is going to be get the best sneakers. So I'll just copy and paste that in. And then I will update the styling as well. So in this case, the color is going to be black 26, font weight W500, and then the font size 15. And there you go. You can see that it says get the best sneakers here. So now we can move on to the next part. So the next part is for us to implement the search field, which contains this icon, and then also this text which says search your favorites, and it's a search field. So how are we going to be doing that? Well, to do this, we are going to create a container, set the color for that container. Within that container, use a row. One of the charts for the row is going to be an icon, which is the search icon. Another one will be the text field. And then we got to update the text field as well. So what I'll do first is I'll say that, again, in the spirit of modularity, make sure that I create a new function. I'll say that this is going to be called the search field. And then once this is done, I'll open up the functions body. I will say that this is going to be a container that gets returned. 
like so. I'll also make sure that the build context is actually passed to the search field function. I'll take the search field. And then after the title, I'll say that we're going to have the search field, pass it the context. There we go. Then we can come back to our search field and start adding some stuff here. So firstly, I'd like to define a specific height. The height is going to be 6% the height of the actual device. So I'll use media query that size of that we've been doing before. After that, I'll add some padding. The padding is going to be edge insets dot symmetric. I only want padding on the horizontal axis. So I'll do that. And the padding needs to be 4% from each side the width of the device. So for that, I'll do the following. So media create the size of width and 4% of the width, I want the padding of that added to both the left and the right. Once this is done, I'll also like to add some margin and I'll explain what margin is. So let's not add it for now. Let's do decoration. So the decoration property allows us to define the decoration of the container. So the styling of the container, basically, it's going to be of type box decoration. And I'll say that the color for the container is going to be colors.white and do save. And as you can see, when I do colors.white, there's this faint white that's now appearing on top of the gray scaffold color that we have. So now we'll update the styling a bit more to make the stand out and make it more prominent. One of the ways we'll do that is by adding a border radius. So I'll say it's going to have a border radius. It's going to be border radius dot circular. And then the radius is going to be 15. And this is just an arbitrary value that I found worked best for my use case. So as you can see, now the borders have been rounded. So what I can do is move to the next part, which is to add a shadow behind this actual container. So we're going to define the box shadow property. It expects us to pass it a list of actual shadows. So I'm going to say that we're only going to have a one box shadow. It's going to be the following. The color for this is going to be colors.black and let's do 12. And then let's see how our box shadow looks. So for now we can't see the shadow because we gotta add some other properties on this such as the spread radius. So let's set the spread radius to one. There we go, we can see the box shadow now appears. And then we also have to set the blur radius. So I'm going to do the blur radius as 10. And there we go, you can see now the shadow is appearing behind the actual container and now it's looking good. One thing I can see now is that the actual container is bunched very close with the text. I wanna add some spacing. So for that, we're not going to be using padding because padding basically refers to the spacing that is applied by the container to its children or the child that this container is going to add. But we want to basically apply spacing between this container and the widgets that are surrounding it, so its neighbors. So for that, we have to use margin. So I'll do margin, and then margin is basically going to be edge dot symmetric. I only wanna apply some spacing on the vertical axis, so I'll do vertical, and then it's going to be the same thing. I want 2% of the height of the screen in terms of the size of my padding. So there we go, now we have some space between the title that I'm seeing and then the search bar that I'm displaying for now. So now that this is done, I'll mark this box shadow list as a const to fix this um, recommendation that, it be, that was being given to us. And now we can come to our container and actually give it a child. So the child for our container is going to be a row. And the reason for that, as I mentioned before, is because we have this icon that is the search icon and then this actual text field that we see here as well. So for that, I'm going to use a row. Then within my row, I am going to define the children list. The children list is basically going to be a widget icon and it's going to be icons.search. And then it's going to have a color, which is going to be colors.black26. There we go. And now we can see the beautiful search icon is appearing. The next thing that I am going to do is after the icon, I'm going to say that I will again have a sized box. And the reason I'm using a sized box is so that I can give a defined width to my actual search bar, else it's going to take up all of the space or the text field, I should say. So I'll do it's going to be a sized box. It's going to have a width. The width will be 80% of the actual width of the device. There we go. And then I'll say that it's going to have a child. The child is going to be a text field. So as the name implies, this widget allows us to implement a field in which we can actually input stuff. So there we go. We can actually see our text field now. We can click on it and start writing stuff in it. So now I want to update the styling for this so that there is no border and there's a hint text and things like that. So to do that on the text field, I'm going to have a decoration property. It's going to be input decoration. And then here I'm going to do border first and I'm going to do input border dot none. So this will remove the border. There we go, the border's removed now. Then what I'll do is that I'll say that the hint text is going to be the following, and I'll just copy and paste that in because it's just 
search for favorites like so. And then once this is done, I'll also like to update the hint style just to make the color of the hint text a bit more muted. So for that, I'll say that the color is going to be the following, which is colors.black like so. So that's pretty much all we have to do. So now that this is done, let's do command save and everything looks great. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is just pushing everything to the side and adding some spacing within them for this actual row that we have. So for that, firstly, I'll define the main axis alignment on the row and I'll say that the main axis alignment is going to be space between. There we go. Now it looks good. So the cross axis alignment is going to be cross axis alignment dot center. And finally, I'm going to have the main axis size and the main axis size is going to be main axis size dot max. So now we have this beautiful search bar. So we can move on to the next part now. And the next part is going to be to implement this list view that basically shows us these buttons, which show us an icon and some actual text for the actual brand of sneakers. So how are we going to be doing this? Well, for this, what I'll do is that I'll actually create a class, which is going to allow me to basically mock how this button looks like. And then we'll be using this class to basically instantiate these different buttons that you see here. So to do that, let's do this. Let's firstly create a function at the bottom of our home page. And I'm going to say that this function returns a widget. And I'm going to say that the actual name for this function is going to be underscore categories list. And I'll say that we'll have the build context passed to this as well. Then open up the function body. I'll say that we'll return a container for now. The container is going to have a height. So I'll say that the height is going to be 5%. The height of the device It's going to have some margin applied to it. And the margin will basically be applied on the vertical axis and it'll be 1% from the top, 1% from the bottom of the screen size. And then with this done, we are not going to define anything more for this. We're firstly going to take this actual function, go to our actual column after the search field, add categories list, pass the context to it, do command save, and there we have it. Everything looks good. So now within this categories list, we are basically going to be rendering a list view. And then within that list view, we have to show our actual buttons. So to do that, what I'll do is basically generate the list view programmatically. And the reason for that is because within my data.dart file, I already have a list of brands, as you can see, and these are just brand objects. And this brand is actually a class that exists within our models file as brand.dart. So each brand has a name and then an actual icon URL. So where the image for that brand exists. So now that this is clear to you, let's come back to our home underscore page dot dart. Let's come to our container. And then here I'm going to set the child to be list view dot builder. The list view dot builder function programmatically builds our list view and expects us to pass it two things. One is a function that defines how each of the child within the list view is built. It gets passed in a build context as well as the index for the child is being built. And then besides this, we also need to pass the actual amount of children we need to build within this list view. So that can be defined by using item count. And we're going to get access to the actual amount of list items that we need to render by accessing the brands list that's within data.dart and then the length property on that. So with this, then make sure that you import the data.dart file. And to do that, you can do dot dot slash data.dart and that should import the file for you. Then let's come back. And we can actually let's see how we're going to be displaying our list view. So for my list view, what I'll do is I'll firstly come to my actual function for the item builder. And here we need to basically return the actual button. And each button is going to be similar to each other, except if it's selected, it's going to have a different color for the text and the background. So to do that, I'm going to create a new folder within my lib folder. I'm going to call this widgets. Then within this, I'm going to create a new file. And this file is going to be called brand button. So let's create a new file brand button dot dart. Open it up. Within this, I'm going to say that I'm going to create a stateless widget. I'm going to call this brand button. And do command save. Then I will say the following, which is that we are going to have two properties on this. They are both going to be final. One is going to be brand. So this is basically the class that comes from brand.dart under models folder. And I'm going to call this brand like so. 
and then the other is going to be a boolean which is going to basically be is selected so if this button is selected the colors are going to be different and then i'm going to do the following which is that both of these are going to be required name parameters that need to be passed to the constructor when this object is initialized or an instance of this object is created like so so now that this is done i can actually import the brand from dot dot slash models slash brand dot dark and there we go then within the build function what i can do is basically for now return a container and then we can come back to our home underscore page dot dark to the item builder and say that we're going to return a instance of our brand button we gotta pass it the brand and whether it's selected or not so for the selected i'll say that if the index is equals to zero then it's basically going to be selected so the index is equals to zero if that's the case we'll mark this button as being selected and then the brand we need to access it so the brand basically depends upon the index for the current child that's being built so i'm going to create a variable which will be of type brand call it brand set it equal to the brands list and then the item at the specific index and that's pretty much all we have to do i'll import the actual model from the actual brand.dart file and let's do command save and that's pretty much all we have to do so now once we add some stuff to this actual container for our brand button stuff should start appearing here so let's do this let's firstly define some properties on the container in terms of the child that is going to have so the child is going to be a row and the reason we're using a row is again we're going to have a icon or an image i should say for the actual logo and then the text for what the actual company name is or the brand is then on the actual row i'm going to have a children's list the first child is obviously going to be the actual image so for that i'll use a container the container is going to have a height the height and width are going to be the same so i'll come to the top of my build function i'm going to say that i'll create a variable I'll say this is going to be called icon size. And then the icon size is basically going to be 5% the width of the screen, like so. Then I'll say that the height for this container will be the icon size and the width for this container will also be the icon size. So now that I've defined the height and the width for this container, I'm going to add a child twist. This is going to be image.network. I'm going to say that the actual URL can be accessed from the property on the brand called icon URL. Let's do command save. There we go, we can see the images. So now I'll come to my home underscore page, make sure that I set the scroll direction on my actual list view to be axis.vertical because right now, or axis.horizontal because right now we can scroll it vertically. I want it to be horizontally scrollable. So there we go. Now everything's being aligned horizontally. Then I'll also say that if the image or the if this brand button is selected, then the color of the image is going to be different. So do that, I'll set the color property on the image.network to be, if it's selected, then it's colors.white, otherwise it's colors.black. There we go, save, and there we go. Now it's going to be white for the first one, you can't see it and we'll fix that in just a bit, but for the other ones, it's black. So now that this is done, I'll also like to basically add the text. So to do that, after the container that I have, I am going to add a text within the row, children's list. The text is going to be the brand's name. And let's see how this looks. There we go, it looks pretty good. So now we just gotta update some of the styling and everything like that. So for the style, what I'll do is define the style property on this text. It's going to be text style. I'm going to say there's going to have a color. It's going to depend on whether the button's selected or not. If the button is selected, it's going to be colors.white. Otherwise, it's going to be colors black 38 like so there we go it looks good also want to make sure that black 38 on here as well there we go and now that this is done i can move on to the next part so i'd like to add some spacing between the logo and the text so for that i'll come to my container i'll say that i'll add some margin to it the margin is going to be agent sets dot only so only on the right side and it's going to be 10. So now there's some spacing between the logo and the actual text within our row. Then once this is done on my row, I'm going to set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot space between, command save, and there we have it. Now everything looks great. So now that this is done, I'd like to actually take a look at the actual container that contains our row and actually fixed some of the styling on it. 
So what I'd like to do is add some padding. So to add some padding, I'm going to do padding edge insets dot symmetric. And then I'm going to do only horizontal padding. And it's going to be 3% of the width of the device and do command save. There we go. Now our actual list looks great and it's coming together nicely. Once this is done, I'll also like to add a border to the actual button or this container, I should say. So for that, I'll define the decoration property. On that, I'm going to say box decoration. And then I'll say that firstly, we're going to have a border and it's going to be border.all. The color for the border depends if it's selected or not. So if it's selected, then the color is going to be colors.white for the border. Otherwise, the color is going to be colors.black38. Then let's do command save and there we go. We can see the border and it looks pretty nice. I want to make the border rounded. So for that, on the box decoration, I'll set the border radius to be border radius dot circular. And from my testing, I concluded 15 to be a good value. There we go. Now it's rounded as well. And then finally, I'd like to update the background color for the container. So for that, I will say that the color for this is going to be dependent upon whether this actual widget selected or not. And then I'll say that if it's selected, then we're going to get the color from the theme. So theme that off context dot color scheme dot primary. So if it's selected, then it's going to be the primary color of the color scheme. Otherwise, it's going to be colors dot black 38. And there we go. That's pretty much all we had to do. And there's one thing that I had to do, and that is to say that this is going to be actually colors dot white. And there we go. Now everything looks great and everything looks the way I'd like it to look. One thing is that we got to make this colors dot transparent, not white. Uh, and there we go. Now it looks good. So now with this done, we've styled all of our buttons nicely. They all look great. The only thing is that I basically need to add some spacing within these actual buttons that are being rendered within the list view. So I'm not going to do that here within the brand button. What I'm going to do is come back to my home underscore page dot dart file and then come to where I have my list view builder and I am going to do the following. I'll take the brand button and I'm going to wrap this with a widget. To do that, you can within Visual Studio Code, right click on it and then click on refactor or you can do control shift R and that should open up the refactor menu as well. And here I'm going to do wrap with container and then do command save and then I'm going to add some margin and the margin is going to be again const edge insets dot symmetric and then here I'm going to do the following which is that on the horizontal I just want 10 pixels on each side save and there we have it now it looks great and all of our buttons look good and everything looks good and now if I change the index to be for example one then Adidas is selected so there we go everything looks great and our UI is coming together nicely so now with the actual list view for the brands looking spectacular the next thing that we are going to be taking a look at is how to create the cards that we see here and then display them in a grid view. And this is basically the last part of our homepage besides the actual bottom bar. So let's do this. Let's add the bottom bar first and then we'll actually take a look at the grid view. So to do the bottom bar part, what we're going to be doing is using a package called water draw nav bar. And then make sure that you have this package actually added as a dependency to your Flutter project. Then on the homepage, I will do the following. I'll come to the build function and on the build function, I'm going to come to my scaffold and on here, I'm going to set the bottom navigation bar property. And this is going to be equal to a call to a new function. I'll say that this function is also going to be returning a widget. And this function is going to be called underscore bottom navigation bar. It's going to have nothing passed to it. And then I'll open up the functions definition and I'll set the bottom navigation bar to be a call to this function. Here, what I'm going to do is basically say that we're going to return a new instance of water drop nav bar. And then it expects us to pass it a couple of things. So let's do that. Since we're not implementing any functionality, what I'm going to do is that on item selected is just going to be a function that gets an index passed to it, but it's going to be empty. So nothing's going to happen. The selected index is going to be zero. And then we basically need to define the items that are displayed in this. So the items is going to be just a list and the list needs to contain bar item. The icon here is going to be icons.home for the first one. And then the outline icon needs to be icons.home underscore outline. So outline icon is shown when the item isn't selected. And then the filled icon is shown when the actual bar item is selected. 
Let's do command save. It's going to give us an error saying that the bar item length needs to be more than one. So let's just do that by copying this bar item, pasting it once more. And this time I'm going to do shopping bag and then shopping bag underscore outline. That's the icon. Command save. Let's make sure that we restart our application. And there we go. We can see the actual bottom bar appearing. So it looks great. So now what I'd like to do is basically update some of the styling on it. So to update the styling, I'll do the following. Firstly, I'll say that the background color for this is going to be colors.white. Then after this is done, I will say that the bottom padding is going to be the following and I'll do media query dot size of context dot height and then 0 0.02. I need to pass it the context. So I'm going to say that this function gets the build context passed to it. And then here I'll say context like so. Now that we've defined the padding as well, the next thing that I'll do is say what the what drop color is going to be. So that depends upon the color scheme of our theme. So let's do theme.offcontext.colorscheme.primary. And the reason I'm doing it this way is so that for some reason in the future, if you decide that I want to change the color scheme for my application, all you'll have to do is come to the main.dart file where you define the color scheme seed. And then basically just change the color here and everything is going to dynamically change. So I can do, for example, colors.red. And by just making the simple change, now my UI is red. I can do green. And just by making the simple change, now my UI is green. So that's why we're using the functionality of actually extracting color information from the theme. So there we have it. Now we can come back to our home underscore dot page. Now we've defined the water drop color. So that's pretty much all we had to do. I'll actually move the selected index and on item selected properties to the top above the bar items list. And then what I can do is basically pass in the remaining two bar items. So like this, do command save. And now we have these four bar items appearing and our bottom bar looks great. And we can move on to actually building the grid that is going to display these cards, which are going to be the sneakers that we can purchase within our app. So to do this, it's going to be again in the spirit of modularity, just creating a function. So let's do that. So for that, I will come to the bottom here. I'm going to create a function in terms of widget. It's going to be called products grid. It's also going to have the build context pass to it. And then let's open it up. I'm going to say that I'm going to return an expanded widget. So an expanded widget basically takes up all of the available space that it can take within its parent. So that's what I want to do. I want to the grid to take it basically all of the space that's available to it once our search bar, the actual buttons list, the actual top bar, and then the actual title have taken up space, then whatever the remaining space it, that's what the product grid is going to take. So that's why I'm using an expanded widget. And then this is going to have a container like so. Now that this is done, let's do command save. Let's take this actual function, go to the top where we have our build function and then the column and then after the categories list i'll add products grid pass the context to it there we go and now everything looks good and we can concentrate on the function now so the container i'm going to basically add some spacing between it but for now let's not do that let's actually take a look at how we can create a grid view and then how we can actually add cards within it and then we can add just the styling later on so to create a grid view i'm going to add a child to this container and it's going to be grid view and since I want to create my grid view programmatically based upon the data that's within data.dart, I will do grid view.builder. And similar to how we have a item builder for our list view.builder, we have an item builder for our grid that basically defines how each of the child for this grid are going to be built. It also gets a context and an index passed to it, like so. So there we go, we've done that. And then the last thing that we have to do is basically define what is going to happen for the actual alignment properties for this grid. So how is the grid going to understand how it needs to place the children that it's going to have? So for that, we basically define that information within the grid delegate. What I'm going to do is say to the grid that, hey, I want two children to be on the cross axis. So since our grid is going to be vertically scrollable, the axis, the cross axis is the horizontal axis. So I want a maximum of two children on every row and this is basically the information that the grid needs to understand how it's going to render out the elements within it so i'll say that we're going to use a grid delegate with fixed cross axis count so there we go and i'm going to say that here the cross axis count is going to be two 
And you'll see how this works in just a bit for now. Just hang on with me and just keep going with me. So let's do all shift F just to reformat the code, add trailing commas. Everything looks good. We can come to our sliver grid delegate, mark that as const, come to the item builder and let's work on this. So what I'd like to do again is go to my widgets, create a reusable widget, which is going to be this product card so that we can use it again and again without having to define it. So for that, let's come to our widgets. Let's create a new file here. Let's say that this is going to be product underscore car dot dart. Then I'm going to say this is going to be a stateless widget. It's going to be called product card. Save. And then for the product card, what I will do is for now do the following. And that is to basically just return a container. And then let's come back to our home underscore page dot dart to the item builder. And here I'm going to do that we're going to return our product card like so and there we go that's pretty much all we had to do so now that this is done i'm also going to give my grid view a item counts which is going to be products and this is going to be a list that comes from our data dot dart file as you can see contains a list of all of these different product objects and then i'm going to say products dot length then within the item builder i'm going to create a variable of type product call it product set it equal to products index and then I will take this product and pass it to the product card. But before that, let's import the model. So products.dart, save. Everything looks good. Everything looks great. Let's continue. So within the product card, there are a couple of different parameters that need to be passed to a product card when it's being created. So let's define those. We need access to the actual product. So how are we going to be doing that? Well, to do that, what I'll do is create a variable, call it product. And I'm going to say product. Then we got to import the actual class. So let's import that from models. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be a required parameter, which is also going to be named. Then once this is done, I'm also going to add a property for edge insets. And I'll explain what this is. But for now, just do final edge insets and the margin. So how much margin is added to this product card? And finally, a function, which is going to be ran when this actual card gets tapped. So this is so that we can actually understand when a card gets tapped and then navigate the user to our actual product detail page. Once this is done to this constructor, I'll say that the other two properties are also going to be required. And then I'm going to do this dot on tap and the margin are going to be not required. So I'm going to say that this is not going to be a required named argument, this dot margin, but and if we don't give it, then by default, it's going to be const edge sets dot and then only. And I'll leave this empty. So no margin. Basically, that's what it means. Command save. Everything looks good. Let's come back to our home page. Let's come to the very bottom. We have where we have where we have our product card. Set the product property to be product. And then after that, we have to set the on tap callback function. So let's set that to be an empty function called for now. And there we have it. Everything looks great. So with this, then we can come to our product card, start styling it, and let's see if it appears on our screen or not. So to start styling it, what I'll do is come to my container, add a child to it, make sure that this child is a column. And the reason we're using a column is because as you can see within our card, we have this top information, which is the price and then this actual icon to like it, then an image, and then following that we have this Nike Air Force One. So that's why I'm using a column. Then what I'm going to do is that before I use the column, I just quickly like to let you know that the image that you see here is not a part of the column. It's actually a background image that I've set on the container. So let's actually set that. So to do that on my container, I'm going to also add a decoration property. I'm going to say this is going to be of type box decoration. Once I have done this on this, I'm going to define the image property and I'm going to say it's going to be of type decoration image. Then now once this is done, I'm going to say that the image is going to be network image and then the actual URL can be accessed from product that gets passed and then the image that's on it. Command save. And there we go. We can see the images appearing now. So now that this is done, what I will do is come back to the actual decoration and I'm going to set the fit on the actual image. That is the background image to be box fit. And then I'm going to do dot contain. And this is basically what I found to work the best. 
Now that this is done, I'd like to add a little bit of shadow to these cards, make them have rounded containers, make the background color be white. So how can I do that? Well, let's do the color first. So it's going to be colors.white. There we go. Now the background color for this is white. And I know it might be a bit hard for you to see, but let's add the background shadows and then you'll see how it looks. Then once this is done, I'm going to set the box shadow property. And then the box shadow property is just going to be a list. And it's going to have a box shadow object within it. And it's going to be color, which is going to be colors dot. And then let's do black 12. We are going to also have a spread radius of one and then a blur radius of 10. Save and there we go. Now we can see these shadows and by adding these shadows, now it looks much better. So now that this is done, what I'd like to do is basically define the sizing of each of these elements within our actual grid view. To do that, what I'll do is come to my home underscore page dot dart and to actually affect the sizing of these children within our grid view, I'm going to come to the grid delegate and on the grid delegate, I'm going to have a child aspect ratio, which I can basically set to a value to manipulate how these actual children are going to be sized within our grid view. So if I do one, this basically means that the height and the width are going to be the same for every child. If I do this to be two, then as you can see, now the width is twice of the height. My testing concluded that 0.75 was a good value and that's why I'm going to set this to 0.75. So the width is going to be 75% of the height. So this is basically what the aspect ratio defines. So now that this is done, let's come back to our product card. But before that, I'd like to add some actual margin or spacing within these actual children. So how can I do that? Well, on my product card, I'm passing in a margin parameter. So I'll define that here and I'm going to say that it's going to be edge insets dot symmetric like so. Then I'll say that on the horizontal axis, it'll be 2%. And then I'll say that on the vertical axis, it'll also be 2% save and everything looks great. And you might not see this for now. And the reason for that is because we got to add the margin that we passed to our container. So on the container, I'm going to define margin and set that to the margin property. And there we go. Now we've added margin and our cards are looking great and everything looks good. So now with this done, we can continue working on our product card. So on the product card, we also need to display the price, a heart icon, and then at the bottom, the name of the actual product or sneaker, I should say. So that's going to happen within our actual column. So within the column, I am going to do the following. I will say that we are going to have a children's list. The children's list is going to contain a call to a function called pricing information. So I'll say that I'll have a function returns a widget called pricing information like so. And then it's going to have the build context passed to us like so. Open it up. And here I'm going to return a row because we have the price and then an icon. So we got to use a row to vertically or horizontally align the children like so. Take the pricing info and add that within the column and pass the function context to it as well. Save. Everything looks good. Let's come to our pricing information. So what I'm going to do is on the actual children's list, say that we're going to have a text and the text is going to be the product dot price dot two string. Save. We can see the price. I'd also like to add a dollar sign before the price. So for that, I'll use an escape character, which is backslash dollar. And then after that, I'll do dollar and then interpolate the actual value of the price within the string. Now I'd like to update the styling for this. I'll just copy and paste that in because this is something that we've seen so much in this tutorial. And I'm just setting the phone size to 20. The color depends on the color scheme, font weight to bold. And there we have it, it looks great. Now that this is done, I'm also going to set the icon after this for the actual heart. So to do that, I'll say after the text, we'll have an icon and it's going to be icons.heart. And it needs to be favorite and that's how it's going to work. Save, there we go, we can see the heart as well. It needs to be favorite outline because I just want to show an outline. Looks great, there we have it, looks fantastic. So now I'm just going to come to my row and I'm going to say that the main axis alignment will be space between to push them to the side. And there we go, now it looks great. One thing I can see here is that everything is at the corner of our card and I don't like that. So what I'll do is I'll come to my container and I'll add some padding to this. 
So to add some padding, after the margin, I'm going to add the padding property. I'm going to say it's going to be edge insets dot symmetric. And then we're going to have vertical and horizontal. So I'll just copy and paste those in because again, this is something that we've done so much and do command save. And now it looks much better. So now with this done, we have to add some rounded corners to our card. So for that, let's come to our box decoration. And then here I'm going to do that. We're going to have border radius and it's going to be border radius dot circular. And then let's do 10. And this looks great. We can remove the const here. Save. There we go. Now the edges are rounded for the card as well. And the final thing is I got to add the name for the sneaker. So for that, after I have my pricing information within my column, I'm going to add a text. And the text is going to be the product dot name. And then we're going to have a style. And the style is going to be the following, which I'll just copy and paste in like so. So we are going to set the font size to 20, the font weight to bold, save. And there we have it. Now I want to basically fix the alignment. So to fix the alignment, I'll come to the column. I'll say that on the main axis, the vertical axis, I want space between. And then on the cross axis, I want to horizontally center them. And then we'll also set the main axis size just for good practice to main axis size dot max. And there we have it. With that, we've completed our home page. And now we're going to be moving to our product page and then actually seeing how to build the product page as we'd seen at the start of the video. But as you can see, everything looks great. Our UI is completely responsive. You can test it out on different devices. That's going to look the same on those as well. Get started with the product page. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to my pages folder. And here I am going to be creating a new file and I'm going to call this product underscore page dot dart. Then I'm going to open this file and within this, I'm going to create a stateless widget and I'm going to call this product page. Another thing I'm going to be doing is basically defining the parameters that are going to be passed to this product page when we create it. And there's only going to be one, which is going to be the actual product for which we are going to be displaying the information for. So create a product variable called product. And I'll basically say that the actual class will be imported from dot dot slash model slash product dot dart. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be required this dot product like so. And that's pretty much all we had to do. Now with this done, let's do command save and let's actually implement the functionality within our application. So where the user actually clicks on one of these cards is that it actually takes them from the home page to our product page. To do that, I am going to be coming to the actual home page and on my home page, I'm going to come to my product card. Then I'll open up the product underscore card dot dot file. And here basically I'm going to say that we have a function that is basically going to be on tap and this function is going to be called when the actual product card gets tapped. But for now, we're not calling this function anywhere. So what I'm going to do is basically on the actual product card, build a function where we return the container. I'm going to wrap that with a widget. And the widget in this case is going to be a gesture detector. Then I'm going to say that the gesture detector is going to have an on tap function, which is going to be the on tap function that we've defined like so. And that's pretty much all we had to do. So now with this then I can close down this file, come back to my home underscore page dot dart. And here I can come to the point where I'm defining the on tap function callback for the product card. And we are basically going to be doing the following. We basically have to access our navigator. So I'm going to do navigator dot push. And then on that, I am basically going to say that I'm going to pass it the context and then the actual route. So the route is going to be a material page route. So let's do that. And there we have it. And then the builder function basically defines how this route is going to be built. So the builder function is going to have a context passed to it, which will be build context. And we'll say that we are going to return the product page like so. But then if you remember correctly, the product page requires a product to be passed to it. So that's going to be a product that we're setting here. So that's pretty much all we have to do. So now with this step, let's do command save. Let's make sure that everything's working. Let's click on one of these cards and let's see if we see a empty page. So none of these are working. Welcome back everybody. So I was able to find the issue. We need to go to our product card and then make sure that on the on tab, we actually call the function as well, like so. And that's pretty much all we had to do. So now with this done, let's click on one of these cards and there we go. It takes us to our product page. So now that we are on our product page, the process for building this is going to be the same. We're going to be taking a top down approach and then we'll be building one thing at a time. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is adding this app bar. 
So to add the app bar, I'm going to be implementing the following logic. Firstly, I'll create a function. So let's come to our product underscore page. And here I'm going to say that now I'm going to have a function that will return a preferred size widget. It's going to be called underscore app bar. And then I am going to open up the function body. Then on the scaffold, which we return for the build function, I'm going to say that the app bar is going to be a call to the function app bar. Then I'm going to do the following, which is just return an app bar widget. And I'm going to say that it's going to have a scroll under elevation, and that is going to be zero. With this, let's do command save. Let's see if our app bar is showing. As you can see, it's showing. And since we're using the navigation stack, it's already giving me a button that I can click on to actually navigate back to the page that I came from. So now that this is done, what I'd like to do is add the heart icon now. So for that, what I'll do is come to my app bar, set the actions list on that. And I'm going to say that we're going to have an icon button here. And then I'm going to say that the on press is going to be just an empty function. And then the icon is going to be const icon, icons.favorite. There we go, that's pretty much all we had to do. And with this, command save, and there we have it. Now we can see the heart. One thing is I gotta make sure that this is favorite outline, and it looks great now. So now let's actually take a look at what we're going to be implementing next. The next thing that I'm going to be focusing on is actually showcasing this image. And this image is going to be behind the app bar as well. So that is one thing that we have to do on that. And then besides this, you're going to see that our UI is kind of divided into two parts. The one is this image that we see, and then we have some space after which we have this kind of a card that has some rounded corners, some shadow behind it, that then it displays all of the information for the actual shoe. So now that we have a good understanding of this, let's come back. So let's firstly create a function, which I'm going to say is going to be called build UI. So build UI, like so. It's going to have a build context passed to it. And then I'll open up the function body. And then before we do anything else, I'll come to the scaffold and I'll say that the body is going to be set to a call to a function build UI. And then the build UI function is going to have the context passed to it, like so. So let's come back and let's start actually implementing the functionality here. So what I'm going to be doing is basically returning a column from this build UI, it's going to have a children's list. And then I'm going to do the following, which is to basically have a function to turn the widget called product image. And then I'm going to say that this will also get the build context passed to it, open up the body, and then I'll add this function called as the first child in the children's list for the column that gets returned from the build UI function. Then here, I'm going to do the following. I'll firstly return a container. I'm going to give that container a height. The height, I'll just copy and paste in. So the height is 45%, the height of the screen. And then the width is the 100% width of the screen. And then after that, I'm going to define the decoration property, which is going to be of type box decoration. Then once this is done, I'll add the trailing semicolon just to fix the error. And let's do command save. And let's see if we can see anything. For now, we can't see anything, so let's just continue forwards. So what I'll do now is on the box decoration, I'll say that the color is going to be colors.white. And you can see the actual white box now appearing. It's very light, but you can see it. Then what I'm going to do is basically define the image on this. So the image is going to be decoration image. It's going to be of type network image. And then the actual URL can be accessed from product.image. Then with this, save, we can see the shoe. So now that this is done, what I'm going to do is define the fit of this image. So the fit is going to be box fit, box fit dot contain, and everything looks good now. So what I'd like to do now is move the actual body of our scaffold behind the app bar. So to do that, we can come to our scaffold and basically there's a property on our scaffold, which is extend body behind the app bar and set that to true. And now, as you can see, our image moves up and is behind the app bar as well. And since the app bar's color is transparent, we can see the content behind that. So now that this is done, we've pretty much created the actual top portion of our UI. So now we gotta work on the bottom part. So to work on the bottom part, I am going to do the following. What I'll do is basically create a new function, which returns a widget. I'm going to call this product details. And I'm going to say that this is going to return an expanded widget. And then the child for this expanded widget is going to be a container. There we go, that's pretty much what we have to do. 
then I'll take the product details, I'll come to the actual build UI, and after the product image, I am going to be adding the product details, like so, and I'll say that I'll pass the context here, like so, and that's pretty much all we had to do. And I'll also define on the function definition that the build context will be passed. So with this, all of the errors are fixed, everything looks good. So the next thing that I'd like to do is basically add some spacing between the product image and the product detail. So as you can see, the product details card and the actual image have a bit space between them. So to do that, I'm going to be using a size box with a fixed height, which is going to be 3% of the height of the screen. So by doing this, now we're going to have some space between the image, the size box, some space, and then the actual product's detail card. So now in the product's detail card, we can do all of the magic for showing the information. So firstly, what I'll do is on my container, I'll set the width, and I'll say that the width is going to be the width of the actual device. And then after this done, I am going to define the children on this, and the child is going to be a column. And the reason we're using a column is because this card contains a bunch of different widgets, and they are in a vertical manner, so we are going to be using a column. So with this done, what I can do is basically, for the children's list, define the first function call, which is going to be product, and then I'm going to say title and reviews. So as the name suggests, for this function, we'll return a widget that basically shows the title and the review. So I'll say a new function, which is going to be named product titles and reviews. And once this is done, I'm going to open up the function's body. Within this, I'll say that I'll return a row, and then I'll have some children within that. The first child that I'm going to have is going to be text. So let's do that. So to do that, I will say text widget, and then it's basically going to be the product's name. So for that, we can do product dot name. Let's do this, and let's do command save. And as you can see, we can see the product name. So now what I'd like to do is basically set the styling for this. So I'd like to make this text bold, so I'll do that with this. And then one other thing I'd like to do is basically set the text scaling factor in this. And this is basically going to dynamically adjust how big or small the text is based upon the size that this actual text widget can get. So to do that, I'm going to say that we're going to set the text scaler property and it's going to be const text scaler dot linear. And then here, the scale factor, which I'm going to pass at 1.4, save. And there we go, now it looks great. So now with this done, I'm going to have another text after this. And this text is going to be the actual reviews that this has. So firstly, what I'll do is I'll paste in the emoji for a star. Following that, I'll have a space, and then I'll interpolate the product rating within the string by doing product dot and then to string. So with this done, what I'm going to do is make sure that I do product dot rating actually, rating dot to string. There we go. So let's do command save. There we go. We can see everything. So now I just got to update the styling on this. So I'll copy and paste the styles in since they are very simple. There we go. Just setting the font to bold and font size to 20. And now that this is done, I'll come back to my row. Now I'll set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot space between, the cross axis alignment to be cross axis alignment dot center, and then the main axis size to be main axis size dot max. Command save and everything looks great. So now what I can do is that actually I wanna add some padding to the actual contents of our product details container because right now they are sticking to the edges of the screen. So to do that, I will come back to the actual container and then on the container, I'm going to define a padding property. The padding property is going to be edge edgeinsets.symmetry. And then here we need to pass some vertical and horizontal padding. So the vertical will be 2%, the height of the screen from top and bottom. And then the horizontal one is going to be 5% from each side, so right and left dependent upon the width. So now everything looks good and we can move on to the next step. So for the next step, before I add anything else to the actual container, I wanna fix the styling for this. So I add the rounded corners, add the shadow behind it, and things like that. So to do that, I will, on my container, basically come and define the decoration property and set that to be box decoration. Then the box decoration is firstly going to have a color, which is going to be colors.white. And once this is done, we can move on to the next part, which is to actually add some shadow. So to add the shadow is going to be basically the same process that we've been doing before. So set the box shadow list, and within that just add a box shadow. And then I'm going to say that the color is going to be colors.black12, spread would be two, and then I will say that the blur radius will be 10. So now that this is done, 
save there we go now we can see the actual card and it stands out much more since the shadow is now much more visible so with this done the last thing that i'm going to be doing is also adding a border radius so since i only want to round the top corners now the bottom corners i'm going to say that the border radius border radius is going to be the following which is border radius and then i'm going to do dot only and i want the top right and the top left so let's do top left first i'm going to set that to radius dot circular and then we can do 25. there we go everything looks great command save and now everything looks good then we can do top right and i'll do the same thing once more paste it in save and there we have it everything looks great so now with this done i can mark the box decoration as const and that should pretty much fix the issue for us and we can move on to the next part which is to add some more content to the actual card within the column so the next thing that we're going to be doing is adding the price so for that once again i'm going to create a function turns a widget called product price and i'm going to say that there's going to be a build context that's going to be passed to this context like so open it up say i'm going to return and then what are we going to be returning? Well, I'm going to basically return just a text. And that's pretty much all we have to do. And for the text, I'll say that we are going to return a dollar sign first. So I'll escape the actual dollar sign by doing backslash and then the dollar sign. So it's going to be included in the string. And then I'll do dollar sign interpolate the actual value by doing product.price.toString. With this done, let's take the product price. Let's add that to our column after the product's title and review. And let's pass the context to it as well. Save. And we can see the price now. So one thing I can see now is that the alignment on the column isn't fixed. So let's quickly fix that. So I want everything to be aligned to the left and then the top. So to do that, I'll set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot start. To cross axis alignment is going to be cross axis alignment dot start. And there we go. Now it looks good. So now all we got to do is update the styling on the actual text. So it's going to be the following. I'll define the style. It's going to be of type textile. And then here, I'm going to say that the font size will be, and then we can do 25. Let's do save. And now it looks good. The font weight can be W700. And then I'm going to say that the color is going to be extracted from the theme. So it's basically going to be the same thing that we've been doing before, where access the theme from the context, color scheme.primary, and now it looks great. So now with this done, the next part is going to be to add the product's description. So to do that, what I'm going to do is again, create a new function, turns a widget. And this function is going to be called underscore product description. And then I'll say that this is also going to get the build context passed to it. And we can open up the actual body. Here I'm going to return a text and it's going to be product.description. With this, let's take the actual product description. Let's go back to our actual column. And after the product price, let's add the product description, context, save, and we can see the description. So now one thing I'd like to do is basically add some spacing between the price and the description and then the stuff that's going to be beneath the description. The description has some padding on both sides. So let's do that. So let's come to our product description. Let's wrap that with a widget. And this is going to be a padding widget. And then the padding is just going to be some padding applied on the vertical. So I'm going to do padding, agent sets dot symmetric, and then it's going to be 5% of the height of the screen from top and bottom. Save, and there we go. Now it looks great. So now with this done, the next thing that we are going to be doing is basically creating the section which allows us to select a size. So to do this, we are going to be basically creating a function. But the more important part here is that since we can see all of these buttons, and they look similar to each other, we're going to be creating a reusable component that's going to allow us to then render these buttons with different data and then a little bit of different styling. So just know that and now we can continue. So firstly, what I'll do is again, create a function, returns a widget. I'm going to say that this is going to be called size selector. And then I'll say that it's going to have a build context like so, pass to it. Within this, I'm gonna say that we are going to be returning and I'll return a column, children, and then let's actually set the children for this column. So firstly, we're going to have a container within this column, which is going to contain this text, which says select a size. And then what I'm going to do is say that the child for this is going to be a const text, which says select a size. Let's do command save. and Everything seems to be working. 
So now what I can do is take the size selector, go back to the actual column after the product description, add the size selector, pass it the context, save. We can see the title, so we can move on to the next step. So on the next step, I'd just like to add some margin to this actual text from the bottom. And the reason for that is because I want to add some spacing between the actual title and then these buttons that we show. So for that, we're going to be adding a margin. So the margin is basically going to be the following, <coughs> which is add in set start only from the bottom 15. Then the next thing I'm going to be doing is that within this column, after the container, I'm going to be adding a row. And the row is going to have some children within it. And these children are going to correspond to the buttons that are going to allow us to select a size. So on the column, what I'll do is set the main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot start. And then the cross axis alignment to be cross axis alignment dot start as well. And there we go, everything looks good. So now we basically have to create a widget class, which is going to allow us to render these different buttons. So let's do that. So to do this, I will come to my widgets, I'll create a new file here. I'm going to call this size underscore button dot dart open it up, say that we're going to have a stateless class. It's going to be called size button. And then let's do command save. So for the size button, we are going to be doing the following. I'll basically say that we're going to have two things passed to us. One is going to be a final int, which is going to be the size of the button. And then one is going to be final bool and whether the button is selected or not. Then I'm going to say that these are going to be required named arguments that need to be passed. So I'm going to do this dot size and then required this dot is selected. Save, everything looks good. Let's come to the build function and let's say that now we're going to be returning a container. Then with this done, let's go back to our product page. Let's come to the children's list and let's basically render some of the actual size button here. I'm basically going to say that within our row, I'm going to say that we're going to have a size button and this is going to be imported from the dot dot slash widgets slash size underscore button file. The size here is going to be eight and then is selected is not going to be true for the first one. So let's remove it because this is going to be optional. So let me do this. Let me go back to my size underscore button and then let me do this. I'm going to say that is selected is not required and by default, it's going to be false. There we go. And then I can just basically take the size button, paste it once more, once more, once more, once more, and once more, and let's change the sizes. So the next one can be nine, then 10, 11, 12 and let's do 14. And I'm gonna say that the 10th one is going to be is selected to true. Command save, everything looks good. So I can mark the row as const as well and that should fix everything for me. So now what I can do is come back to the actual size button widget and start adding content here so that it actually gets properly rendered. So for the size button, what I'm going to do is basically say that we're going to have a child and the child is going to be a text and the text will be the size string. Let's do command save and let's see how it looks. So we can see all of the sizes being shown. But for now, since everything's bunched together, it looks like a random number that's being printed. Then I'm going to set the styling property on this textile. So I'm basically going to do the following. I'll say that the color basically depends on whether the actual button is selected or not. So the color is going to be the following. If it's selected, then we're going to do colors.white. Otherwise, we'll do colors.black and then we can do 38, I believe. Save. Let's see how everything is. There we go. Everything looks good. So now the size that's selected, the color for that is white. And then let's do the font weight. So the font weight will be font weight W700. Just paste that in. And everything looks good. So now I'd like to add some margin and padding to this. So let's do that. So to the actual container, I'll say that we'll have some padding. It's going to be edge sets dot symmetric. And then I'm going to say that it's going to be horizontal. And then we can do media query dot size of context with 0 0.05, save. And there we go. Now everything has decent amount of padding given to it. Let's add some margin as well. So for margin, I'll do margin and then edge sets dot only. And I'll show you why we're adding a margin in just a bit. Let's firstly do this. Let's actually update the decoration property for this container so that you can see what the actual problem is and why we're using a margin. So the decoration is going to be box decoration. And then we're going to have the color. So the color basically depends on whether it's selected or not. So if it's selected, then it's team dot off context dot color scheme dot primary. Otherwise, it's going to be colors dot white. There we go. Save. 
and everything looks great. So now the selected one has this kind of um, pinkish color and then the other ones have the white color and it actually needs to be transparent. There we go. And now that's done. Next, I'm going to do the border as well. So for the border, it's going to be the following. First, let's define the border radius. So the border radius dot circular 15. And that's what worked for my testing. And finally, the border. So for that, let's do border. And we can do border dot all. And then here I'm going to do that the color is going to be dependent upon whether it's selected or not. So if it's selected, it's colors dot white. Otherwise, it is going to be colors dot black 38. Save. And there we go. Now you can see that it, the buttons are actually looking nice. So now as you can see that the actual buttons don't have spacing within them. So that's why I'm going to do edge and sets dot only. And then I'm going to do the following, which is to basically say that we're going to have some margin, but that's only going to be from the right. And it's going to be the width of the screen 1% of that. So let me just copy and paste that in since we've been doing this a lot during this actual development. And there we go. Now this looks good. So there we have it. Now the actual select the size buttons are looking great as well. So we can move on to the next part, which is to actually add this button that is basically telling us to add this product to the bag. So how can we do this? Well, to do this, what we're going to be doing is again, creating a widget, which is going to be called add button. And then we're going to be adding that to our product page. So to do that, I'll come to my widgets. I'll say I'll have a new file here. And I'm going to say that this is going to be called add underscore button dot dart. Then I'm going to say that I'll create a stateless class and I'm going to call this add button. Then on the build function, I'm going to say that I'm going to return a container and the container is going to have a child which is going to be a material button. And then that is going to have for the on pressed callback, just an empty function. And let's save this and everything looks great. Then what I'm going to do is on the actual button, I'm going to say that we're going to have a final variable type double, and it's going to be the width and the height that needs to get passed for this button. Then I'll say that these are going to be required parameters. So this dot width required, and then we're going to do the same for this dot height to require this dot height. Let's do command save. Let's come back to our product page. So now within my product page, I'm going to come to the very bottom, create a function widget, add to cart button. Say that this is going to get a build context pass to it. Open up the function body, take this actual function, go to the very top. Then in the build UI after the actual product details function is found, come within that. And then after the size selector, I can add the add to cart button like so. Context, question, comma, comma, save, and there we go. So now we can come down below and actually add the button here within this actual function. Within the function, I'm going to say that I will return and then we are going to be saying it's going to be our add button. And then we have to give it a height and a width. So basically what I will do is basically say the height is going to be the following. Let me just paste that in. It's going to be 5% of the height of the actual device. Um, and then I will also define the width. So the width will be 80% of the width of the actual device. Let's do command save and nothing's happening as of now. So let's come back to our add button and actually add some content here so that it's displayed. So for my material app, I'm going to set the children here. So the child and the child is going to be a row. And then we're going to have the children on that. So firstly, we're going to have an icon and this is going to be icons dot shopping shopping underscore bag. Let's do that. Command save. We can see the shopping bag appearing now. Then what I will do is say that the color for this is going to be colors dot white. Then once this is done after the icon, I'm going to say that we'll have a text and the text will be add to and then we can do bag. And as you can see, now I can see that as well. So then what I'll do is that on this, I'll say that the styling is going to be the following where we'll have textile color, colors.white. There we go. Let's do command save. Everything looks good. So now I'll come to the actual container. And on this, I'll define the decoration property. And I'm going to say that the decoration is going to be box decoration. And I'm going to have a color, which will be theme dot off context dot color scheme dot primary. Now we can see the actual button appearing. I'd also like to make the corners for this rounded. So I'll do border radius and then border radius dot circular. And let's do 15. And there we go. The button looks very nice. 
So now what I'll do is that I want to center everything within the row. So on my row, I'm going to do main axis alignment to be main axis alignment dot center, not end. And now everything's in the center. And I want some spacing within the actual icon and then the text. So for that, I can just add a space before the text like so. And this will add the appropriate spacing that I need. I can do two spaces that actually looks much better. And there we have it. This pretty much looks great. And that's all we have to do for the add button. So now what I'd like to do is basically add some spacing between the size select buttons and the actual add to cart button. So that's actually going to happen on our product underscore page dot dart. Here, what I'll do is basically wrap the add button with a widget. And the widget in this case is going to be a container. And then I'm going to say that the container will have some margin. And I'll just pretty much paste the margin settings in because they are very similar to what we've been doing before. And there we go. Everything now looks good. So with that, that pretty much concludes the tutorial as we have not only built the complete product page, but also our home page. And this is a fully functional UI that's completely responsive. So you can deploy that on an iPad or an Android phone or an iOS phone with different screen sizes and it's going to look good on all of them. So with that, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, feel free to leave them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep going and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.